power line. It's the downed power lines crumpled and yanked out of their bases. Fox News' Steve Harrigan describing the post-Hurricane Maria scene in Puerto Rico, specifically as it pertains to electricity. That line is just a microcosm of what the entire island will likely endure for months. No refrigerators, no air conditioning, no lights as Hurricane Maria decimated the Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority's grid. Officials say it'll take at least four months to get the lights back on for the entire island's 3.4 million residents. Maria moving on to batter the Dominican Republic this morning. Right now it's strengthening over warmer water as it heads toward the Turks and Caicos Islands. Hurricanes have wreaked havoc on the energy sector over the past few weeks, specifically Hurricane Harvey, which hit Houston very badly. Executive Director of the U.S. Energy Association, Barry Worthington, is here to talk about that, but also the what appears to be strengthening line of hurricanes, or, or not. Uh, Barry, it, it just seems like we've had terrible hurricane season so far, and it's not done yet. Well, that, that part is true, and our hearts certainly go out to the people in Puerto Rico who are living through a terrible, terrible situation. I do want to comment, though, that here on the mainland in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, our energy industry workers have been heroes in working desperately to get refineries back online, to restore power to individual homes and businesses. And these guys, the linemen particularly, they leave their families in the dark Absolutely. to go out and help other people get power. So our heart goes out to Puerto Rico. Um, God help them. Uh, but we need to also applaud our industry workers here in the continental U.S. And we do. We do. And there was a huge gasoline shortage during Hurricane Irma in Florida. I remember that from Sandy. It was it was frightening, especially for yes. anybody who needs transportation and doesn't have an electric vehicle or natural gas burning buses. Let me just quickly ask you, though, uh, there's been so much discussion some people saying absolutely, some people saying nope, not so much, that, that climate change has really started to show its fangs with all of these hurricanes. Um, what is your position on that? Well, I think that we'll wait and see what the meteorologists have to say after the storm. Storms, multiple storms are all over, and they have a sense to, to review and evaluate the data. Um, what I've heard in the past from meteorologists and climate scientists, and climate scientists who very much support the notion that we're seeing a, warm, a warming pattern, they've, they've said in the past that you can't tie an individual storm to the larger meteorological trends. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to today be in a wait and see mode and see what the climate scientists tell us in a few okay. months after they've studied the data. President Trump said we're exiting the Paris Climate Accord until there's a better deal put on the table. Um, right. This is a very plain question. Under what type of circumstances, because you agree with him to step away from it, under what circumstances would you say that we could support, that kind of deal we could support? What needs to be in a, a newer Paris Climate Accord? Well, there needs to be a more equal sharing of burdens. Um, you know, the United States makes a commitment to a 26, 28 percent reduction by 2025, and other countries that are large emitters uh, get off with a sense of, you know, we'll give it a try and see if we can reduce emissions. But the reality is here in the United States, our in the energy industry has been uh, and will continue to reduce emissions for a whole variety of, of reasons. And the, uh, the Paris Climate Accord has nothing to do with any of it. Then there's this. This is, uh, it appears to be a, a brand new sort of frontier on lawsuits against big oil. Lawsuits against big oil, as you know, uh, go back to the beginning of time. But now San Francisco yes. and Oakland are suing big oil, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil, Shell, BP, over climate change, specifically saying that they should be on the hook for any damage to the Bay Area that comes from rising seas that are pointed at for climate change. What do you think of that? Well, I think it is much more of a silly political statement than it is a serious legal matter. I would be shocked if it's not tossed out of court uh, at the first opportunity. Uh, the, the, the claims that they're making are impossible to prove, um, and any court is going to recognize that, and I, 